In this tutorial, I'm going to show content writers how to use the new content editing experience in WordPress. If you've used WordPress before, this is what it looked like. And here, let's take a closer look. You had a spot for your title and you had this big area where you could just type away and you had your standard editing options right there. Well, that's different now because this is the new WordPress content editing experience. It's nicknamed Gutenberg and this is going to be pretty much on every WordPress website. So you as a content writer need to get used to this new editor and I want to help you do that in this video tutorial. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button and if you don't want to miss a thing, click on the notification bell and YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. Now before we get started really digging into the interface I want to set your mind at ease sure it looks different it's a different experience but it's a better experience if you ask me from someone who has written a lot of content in WordPress it's a much better experience so let's just go ahead and jump on into it so the first thing I want to let you know is that the way it looks as far as the font right here and the fonts used throughout and the colors of the fonts it might be different based upon the website that you're working on because what happens happens is it's trying to recreate what it's going to look like when this content is on the front end of the website what happens when you click on publish and so what happens is the editor now is going to pull in the fonts from your theme the website that this is on and that you're working on and it's going to pull in the font colors as well from the website so it's probably going to look a little different for each person so before all of the content you would add would be in this one box right here. Now, what happens is each bit of content is going to be in its own container, which is also called a block. And so let's go through the navigation up here first, and then we'll start adding blocks to this page. So we have this plus right here. And when you click on it, it's going to show you a list of blocks at the top here. It's going to show your most used blocks. And then as you scroll down, it'll be common blocks. And these are the blocks that you would most likely use in content, which is paragraph headings, lists, images, galleries, quotes, and stuff like that. But there's also some really nice advanced things that you couldn't really easily do before. So when we look at formatting, uh, we've got one really interesting option, table. It's very difficult to do a table in WordPress normally, but not anymore. We also have layout elements, so it's super easy to add buttons and columns to the content that you're creating. As we scroll down, we have just a few widgets, but we have also the different content embeds that you would bring in from other places, such as Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and the like. Now, all of these blocks can be a little difficult to manage. That's why you have this most used panel, and you can also search for a block right here. Next, we have these options to go back in time to undo. This is something we didn't have before with WordPress. Now you can undo and redo, and it is very useful. This I'll show you in a moment. This I, essentially what it's going to do is give you some stats on the content that you've already put in. It's going to let you know how many words, how many blocks you've used, and also it's going to have these kind of jump navigation links to the headlines that you've used in your content. I'll be showing you that in a moment. And then right here is just a block navigation. It's a list of the blocks. I don't personally find this that useful, but it is a nice overview. You're going to mostly be using this option here in jumping from title to title, headline to headline in your content. And I'll be showing that you that in a moment. Next, we have the preview and publish button. We have this option settings panel right here. And when we click on it, all this is going to do is hide this panel right there. So now it's not showing and you have more space for your content. I personally prefer to have that open. Now, one of the most important areas of settings for Gutenberg is right here where it says more. And when you click on it, we have some options options. First is the toolbar placement. Do you want it to be where your content is or do you want to have it here at the top? Let me add a title and a little bit of content so I can show you this. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added a title and the first paragraph 
to this article. So when I click right here on the first paragraph, we have the editing options right here, which is your alignment, bold, italics, and all of that. But see, when I am in the options here, if I didn't want it there, I can click right here, it says unified toolbar, and it moves it up here to the top. So now when I click in my content, I can just start editing my content, and here are those options. So this is gonna boil down to a personal preference. The one thing to keep in mind is when they are above the actual content block, it's kind of blocking what's above it. So you can see that an example of that right here, how it's kind of blocking it. So you might not want that, you might wanna go with the unified toolbar option. The next option is spotlight mode. I don't personally like this, it kind of grays everything out, and then only when you're clicked into something do you see it come to life, and everything just kind of fades out into the background. And we can uncheck that because I'm not a real big fan of that. But then we have this really neat option called full screen mode. So when I click on this, I am literally in a full screen editing mode. And then if I hide this toolbar here by clicking on the settings wheel, now I am literally have a clean canvas so I can focus solely on the content. And then if you were to add the unified toolbar, here it is, it's as clean as it gets. You could focus on creating fantastic content. Now the first bit of advice I wanna give you when it comes to using this new content editor is just to use it like you normally would. So if you're at the end of a paragraph and you wanna start a new paragraph, you could just hit the enter key and then go down and you're in a new paragraph and you can start typing away. So here I am, I've written a second paragraph. So let's just say I wanna add an image underneath this. So I will do the same thing, I'll click the enter key. Now if I look all the way off to the right, there's an option here that says add image. I can click on that and we get a new image block. So I can choose media library or upload or insert from a URL. I'm gonna click on media library. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this image right here and then click on select and that's all there is and I still can format my image now I've got the formatting options right here so if I wanted it centered I can click right here and it will align that centered when we're viewing the content in its normal container on the front end of the website and we also have an option here to put a caption in now I'm gonna return this editor to the default view it's quite simple to do I'll click on the three dots on the top right uncheck unified toolbar click on the three dots, uncheck full screen mode, and then I'll click on the settings wheel, and now I am back to where I was. So what I can do next is just go ahead and click on enter, and there I am. I've just gone down a new line. Now obviously by going down a new line, I've created another block. So let me fill something out here. Now when you click into any of the blocks, you're gonna see some options here. So obviously I can go back to the document options or I can click on block to see the options for the block that I'm in. So I'll click the settings right here and I'm in this block. And here I can change my font size if I wanted to. I could do the drop cap. I can change the colors, which includes the background and the color of the text. So if I wanted this to be red and I wanted my text to be white, it's that simple. Now that would be a little hard to read, so I'm going to take advantage of the undo option that we now have. So I'll click it once to change the font color, I'll click it again to remove the background color, and I'm back to normal. This is something that was very difficult to do before in the old editing experience. Now when you have your options right here, you can see there's uh, more options right here we can click on that and here are some additional things we can do. We can hide the block settings. We can duplicate this particular block. We can insert a block before or after, edit it as HTML, and we can even add this to be reusable over and over again or we can click here to remove the block entirely. Let me show you how to remove a block. If I was to click on the backspace or the delete key right here, you can see I'm editing the text. But if I click just above it, and you can see the cursor isn't flashing, and now I hit the backspace key, it's gonna remove the entire block for me. So I hope you're starting to see that editing in, in this new content editor experience isn't really that much different than any other tool that you all already are using. So let's go ahead and start a new block. And what's nice is you 
you could easily turn a block into different types of content. So let me add something here. So I've added another line of text and we have this option here that will allow you to change the block type. So you can click on that and you can change this to a heading by clicking right there and you can choose the H tag for this heading and it will again pull in the style from the theme that you're using. And if you wanted to change it again, we can click here. We can turn it back into a paragraph if we wanted to, a quote. So let's turn this back into a paragraph. Now let's go back in. We could also turn this into a list. So if I did that, we would have the dot there and I can click right here to turn it into a numbered list if I wanted to. So now when I click on enter, it's gonna go to number two and keep going down in the list. So I hope you're starting to see how easy it is to work with Gutenberg. Now, before, if I wanted to say move this list up here, it would be a little tricky sometimes with the formatting. But with Gutenberg, I can click right here on the side and I can move this wherever I want. You see where I have the blue line right there? Well, if I was to let go, that is where my list now is. And now another nice thing about this new content editing experience is I can, if I wanted to insert content in between this list and this paragraph, I can click on this little plus right here and it just separates it out a little bit and I can start typing away. Now let's take a quick look at the content structure, which was this I right here. Now when I click on it, it's gonna show that this article so far has 34 words, three paragraphs, and five blocks in total. Those additional blocks are the image and the list. So at this point, you can go here and we have options to save this as a draft or we can publish it. Now let's first go back though and take a look at the document settings. And this should look familiar to you if you've used the word WordPress editor before. We have our visibility options right here. We can choose right here to enter categories, tags, we can select a featured image, we can add an excerpt right there, and depending on the theme and the plugins you're using on this particular website that you're on, you might have some additional options. So for me, I have the theme options right here where it says Astra settings. Let's go ahead, scroll on up, and click on publish, and then it reveals this option right here so I can change it from the visibility to what I want it to be. I can change the publish date if I wanted to, and and it's even making a suggestion to add some tags. I'll go ahead and click on publish. It says publishing and then right here, it gives us the link to jump to. But also over here on the right is the link as well. You can copy it and send that on out. If you did want to change that link, the text in it, you can click into the title right here. It shows you the full link right here. You can click on edit and you can change this to be whatever you want. Just a quick SEO tip, shorter is better here. So now I want to show you a real article and right here is a real article and it's got a lot of content blocks, a lot of content and let me show you now what it looks like when you click on the content structure icon for a full article. You can see the words, over 1200 words and the amount of headings and paragraphs and all that but what I really wanted to show you is something I really like about this new content editing experience which is this document outline. So if I know I need to adjust something in this section right here. I can go ahead and click on it like that and it takes me right there immediately in the editor. This makes it easy to jump around for longer content posts. And I can click right here where it says title and it's gonna jump me right back up to the top. Now here is that block navigation. Like I said, I don't see myself using this that much because all these paragraphs, it doesn't have meaning, but if it did, if I did click on it, it would take me straight on over to that paragraph. Now I wanted to show you what this looks like on the front end and we can decide if it looks similar. So here, let me go ahead and put this in full screen mode so you can see how it looks right here inside the editor. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click right here where it says preview to see how it looks on the front end. And here it is, the front end of the website. And I have got to say, it looks pretty much the same thing. And that is the big benefit of using this new content editor is you're gonna get a really good idea as you're editing it, how it's going to look 
on the front end as long as the theme on the website is Gutenberg compatible. And that's pretty much all there is to using the new content editor that's in WordPress. And I hope you saw from this video that it's not that hard to use. It can seem a little bit more complicated, but you just have to remember, jump in there and use it as you would any other tool, as you would use Google Docs or a Word document or the old content editor. And the editor will take care of the rest for you. And then you have all those benefits of being able to change what a blocks type is, rearrange your blocks, jump around and get that snapshot overview of the content that you're writing. Now for this video, I used the Astra theme, which is one of the very first themes to be fully Gutenberg integrated. And as you saw, you get to see the fonts and the colors and the spacing and everything just as it's going to look on the front end. So I'll make sure to add a link to the Astra theme down below, or you can visit wpcrafter.com slash Astra if you want to check that out. Now on the channel, I have many videos on Gutenberg and I'm going to keep releasing videos on Gutenberg to make sure everybody knows how to get the most out of this new content editing experience. And in the short future, you're going to be able to use it to build entire pages that you would normally do in a page builder, but you're going to be able to do it with Gutenberg. No extra software required. So that's all that I have for you in this video. I want to thank you for taking your time to watch it. If you found some value in it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you know somebody that's using Gutenberg, and they are new to it, this video might help them. Go ahead and send them a link to this video so that they can watch it and learn how to use this new content editor. Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing on this channel. Hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.